Fight for me now has to be about the same thing that it started to be about, it's advocacy. Pride is political. Pride is all about, you know, being your true self. Pride, oh, pride means everything to me. Pride in Innisfil is, it's about inclusiveness, including everyone together. Pride for me has always been about uh, being inclusive. As an ally, it means helping everybody feel comfortable. It's a celebration of love, friendship, equality, acceptance. Pride is resiliency. Pride is struggle. Uh, pride is a network, a community. Pride was never about, like, look at me, I'm gay. It was, look at me, I'm here. Pride to me means an opportunity to um, unapologetically and unashamedly be ourselves. Pride is just a, an opportunity for recognition of diversity, inclusion, um, and for everyone to be themselves. You, when you hear the word pride, you just think of being proud of who you are. And that generally is the general consensus of what pride is. It's about being proud of who you are, no matter what walk of life you come from, no matter the color of your skin, your religious belief, it does not matter. You should be proud of who you are as an individual. I've always struggled with uh, my black and queer identity um, together because for a long time and still in, in today's day, I don't know if a lot of people know that in the world there are, they, they list these countries that are the most dangerous for, uh, to us LGBT people. Um, and a lot of those countries are unfortunately are from the African diaspora or from, you know, from the Caribbean communities. Um, so for a long time as a queer person, I felt like I could not be proud to be queer and black because of that homophobia and the transphobia that lives within the community. Um, but as I got older and as I started to not just fight for myself, but fight for my children and their rights to be who they are and freely, um, I've recognized that it's my job um, to stand up and create a community um, that is inclusive and, and safe for all people. Um, and, and in that, grow to love myself in my blackness and in my queerness. I had started doing my drag and wonderful Jesse Lawson had seen me from Barry Pride and uh, asked me if I'd like to be in drag on the, in the parade, on the float. So I was ex like blown away, so excited. I was like, yes, please, I would love to. So that was my, uh, my first public appearance. And since then, it's been uh, just a blessing and a dream come true to be, to finally be out there and be who I want to be and have fun doing it. And not only the drag queens, but everyone, you know? It's just, it's, it's great. I, I love it. I got into drag simply because I felt there was just something I was missing and I couldn't put the pieces together. I would jump from this project to that project, from this job to that job, and nothing really kind of fit right. You know, it was like a puzzle piece that was in the wrong puzzle, like, uh, most of the time. And then when I found drag, I went full into it. I looked, like, really bad. I did garage doors for my eyes and just went out. You could still see my mustache. Wasn't the greatest first time going out. But I've improved. I've gotten better, because drag is not just putting on a wig, putting on a dress, throwing on a heel and getting out there. It's being able to tell your story and tell the story of others before you. Being a drag queen 
in general, it doesn't matter how old or how young you are, you have a responsibility upon your shoulders to represent our community. Within the younger generation, like you said, they have kind of forgotten the path that was laid down for them because of the fact that we are such an open, accepting society now that people don't have to come out. They're just who they are and that's it. Um, I think it's super important for people such as myself and other drag queens and other um, people in the LGBTQIA plus community to stress the reason why we have pride, to stress the reason why they have the ability to be the people that they are unabashedly. If it wasn't for our forefathers and mothers and everybody in between, we would not be sitting here today having this interview. Um, so it is really important that the younger generation take a moment, breathe in the life that is our queer culture, and they need to understand the whole spectrum of it, not just what it is in this finite right now. We need to keep in mind that the LGBTQ community is diverse, has diverse perspectives, and we're not always gonna get along on every issue, and that's okay. And that's what a community is all about. And it's about how we work through those issues uh, and still have each other's backs when, uh, when the rubber hits the road. So, and I think we do have that in Barrie um, because we have to for survival in this city. Um, it's no secret that Growing up uh, as a gay kid or a trans person in this community is not easy. Um, so we need to stick together and we need to continue that fight uh, to end systemic oppression um, because lives depend on it. Fairte Simcoe Pride started back in 2012 and has always been primarily focused around community engagement and education towards either community members, allies, or just the public at large. FSP has always recognized that one of the biggest issues to queer people is generally just lack of knowledge amongst the general public about what exactly it is to be queer or queer issues. I know there are a lot of people who are closeted still and they can't necessarily be visible but it is good for pride to be visible and accessible for people who are, say, who have disabilities or are closeted. That way they can see that it still exists in the world. I came out to my parents when I was, I think, 15 or 16 under slightly less than ideal uh, circumstances. I kind of ended up getting, getting outed to them, so I had to explain it. And uh, my mom, she's always been incredibly supportive of it. Even then, I remember when I came out, she was crying, she gave me a big hug, and she's like, oh, I'll always love you. But my dad gave more of the typical response where he was upset and he stormed off. And we talk now and our relationship's a lot better now because it's been like six years, eight years almost. But at the time, it wasn't well and things have improved a lot, mostly because my mom's talked to him about it. So he's more accepting now than he was. We're valid, that we deserve a place and we deserve to be celebrated. And, uh, and for me, a, a big part of Pride um, is, has been and always should be about uh, activism and advocacy and making sure that uh, those marginalized folks within an already marginalized community are given the space to be heard. That activism and, and advocacy for, uh, for all queer folks uh, and I'm talking every spectrum under the rainbow, um, <clears throat> non-binary, trans folks, uh, ev every, every color of the rainbow needs to be represented at Pride and, and be allowed to have um, an equal, an equal spe space and an equal voice. And I've really, um, in the short amount of time that I've been part of the, uh, the community and, and focused on activism and advocacy, um, there are a ton of young folks that, uh, that are really fighting that fight and making sure that, uh, um, that the history of pride is maintained and that the idea of, uh, of marginalized groups within our pride organizations are, are really put to the forefront and allowed to have that space and have a light shine on them.
In Innisfil, in my community, there was no pride. There was Barry pride, there was York pride, there was Toronto. It's, we, it's as if we just got forgotten about along the way. So I, I did want to bring an inclusiveness to Innisfil. I wanted the community to be able to work together. I wanted to show the rest of our neighboring cities and towns that Innisfil is just as innovative and supportive of pride. Innisfil is made up of so many wonderful people and different cultures that are beautiful and amazing and a lot of a lot of things come from personal belief or they come from religious belief and we never want to impede on somebody's beliefs or religion or, or force ourselves upon. And I, I do strongly believe the community members in Innisfil do realize that Innisfil Pride is different. Uh, we're trying to make that change so that it's it's easier for the next, not, not I don't want to say generation, next chapter, the, it, it, the, whoever wants to start the next little organization or they just want to feel comfortable, maybe they start an alliance at school. So having Innisfil Pride working inclusive with the community, if we've been around since 2018 now, uh, the majority of our events are inclusive events. They're not even Pride related events, they're just hosted by Innisfil Pride. Uh, we partnered with the Barry Indian Association. We celebrated the Diwali Festival of Lights together. Um, that was a, a pride just assisted. But it was nice that the community reached out to us knowing that we do partake in everything. Uh, we're willing to work with absolutely anybody and we just want the, the residents to know that we're here to support them in whatever they need. It's not just about pride, it's about how they feel about themselves. so much like admiration for someone who is young right now and truly discovering who they are and even if you know maybe when you're 16 you feel like this is how you feel but then I mean that might change and I know people who are in their 30s and in their 40s who are still discovering who they are so to think that you would be you know, whether you're a child or a teenager or even in your early 20s and you're being so out and so open and so loud and so proud. I mean, honestly, I, I commend you. I respect you for it. And I think that you're really helping to um, change the perception of what it means to be you and who you define as. And remember, only you can define yourself. Nobody else can do that, right? Only you can define who you are. And I think it's awesome that you are, you know, waving that rainbow flag and you're loud and you're proud and just keep doing that. What took me so long to come out? I think that if I'm being honest with you, like working, like working in this business, we tend to, you know, all people tend to put so much focus on their career and what that means to be successful and almost like having that sort of one track mind, that tunnel vision on what you want to do. If I'm being honest, I think I put my own, my own feelings, my own self aside and I was so focused on what I wanted to do in my career until I hit this point where it was like, oh my gosh, like you can't, you can't deny it anymore. You can't pretend that you're something that you're not and then you know, I was in a relationship secretly, like nobody knew that I was in a relationship with this person and it ended. And so I was kind of like, honestly suffering in a little bit of silence. And I just thought to myself, okay, I know I'm not really out to, en to anybody. I know that like people are gonna draw their conclusions are already, th I know that there's that perception of me anyway. I just wasn't at that point where I was ready to say, you know, who I was or accept my own self. Because I think in the gay community, in the LGBT community, there's times when like, we're almost like, you know, you talk about homophobia, you talk about all these things. It's like, we're almost like homophobic against ourselves before we're actually ready to accept ourselves. And I think back to who I am now, uh, even compared to who I was when I came out. And then before that, like pre coming out to me feels honestly like a lifetime ago and I'm not that old. <laughs> so it's like, but I think that like, I feel like the, la the last decade or so has been like in many ways, in so many ways, the, the best years of my life. 
obviously there's conversations that have followed, you know, coming out and, you know, family members who want to ask questions and, you know, but that's going to come with the territory and not everyone's going to be moving at the same speed that you are. I guess it was 2018, uh, early 2018, I had a physician who approached me because one of his patients was having a lot of difficulty in his home situation and came to me and said, would I mind being an open gay man? Talking to him, reaching out to him, and, uh, and I said, of course, sure I would. And so I realized that I could really make a difference because I, I started meeting with this gentleman and just letting him know that it was okay to be gay and that he should be himself. And it really turned his life around. We got him started doing some CrossFit and it, you know, I realized that I made such a difference. So then uh, Andrew, one of the other openly gay men in town, uh, we are good friends and we decided that we should start the Rainbow Club. So Andrew? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We. Um, we knew that there was a community here uh, across the South Georgian Bay, um, but we didn't really have a, a space of our own, so to speak, uh, not like you have in bigger cities. So we thought, let's create the Rainbow Club. Uh, let's invite people of all ages, all genders, all expressions, and uh, let's create events for people to come together and just to connect. So our starting mission was connecting our community. And I remember the first, remember the first event we did here, we had like 80 people show up and they aged, or they ranged in age from 17 to 70 and we were so excited that the whole community came out and that's where it all began it was just bringing people together yeah and i mean uh it was amazing to see how many of uh, the lgbtq community that we actually have in collingwood and uh so it's just grown since then yeah. what we've done this year with uh with this pride festival is we really have focused on it not being a party and actually the programming behind it is really about education and really kind of giving a platform for people to understand why we have pride more than just a party. This year really is gonna focus on many different interest groups within the LGBTQ community and really allow the community to understand why pride is important and, and why it exists. think virtual events they think oh, I'm just gonna see one person on a screen and talking and that's no fun this event is going to have virtual photo booths there's chat there's Q&A there's polling there's the ability to enter to um, engage with other attendees engage with the speakers um, there's gonna be scavenger hunts there's gonna be uh, what we're calling the Pride Game. Um, all our sponsors are gonna have virtual sponsor booths and you can interact with sponsors as well. And uh, amazing programming, like incredible programming. We have um, keynote speakers including Carol Pope, um, Carson Arthur, and Curtis Gabriel. Um, we have a lot of people speaking from the community, so local community members um, doing diverse topics, everything from parenting, um, there's a trans panel, there is a um, panel on diversity and inclusion, um, so a lot of hot topics. To attend the event, number one, you have to register. 
So if you go to pridecollingwood.com, um, click on the link to register, you need to register to attend the event. So registration is free but you must register to attend. Uh, once you've registered, you'll get communication with us on how to um, access the virtual event space. The virtual event space requires a login. That's why you need to be registered. So we know who you are when you're there. You know, Pride is colorful and fun and um, a celebration. Pride is activism. It's still, it's still a moment of, you know, we're here, and um, we live here, this is our community, and you know, we're a part of it. And it's an ability to um, create awareness as well. There's nothing scary about it, you know. Uh, it's just different. People have different ways of living their lives and, and ours is to just not judge and accept. Love is love. One of the things that we want to do after Pride, we have a very small board that, that leads the Rainbow Club of South Georgian Bay. John and I started it. We have partners with us today. But we really want to grow, and we really want this uh, Rainbow Club of South Georgian Bay to be much more inclusive. And we want young people to sit at the table with Absolutely. us. Absolutely. And we want yeah. more volunteers. Uh, John and I, I, I see myself as someone who has maybe sparked the flame, but I want to I want to pass the torch to the younger generation to lead this. So, you know, we invite our community members, particularly younger people, to come and join us and help us do this. I think I think that's where the the growth and the and the real um, the real traction will come from the Rainbow Club. Yeah, and this is this is one of the really important things about Pride. When you ask about the the importance of Pride, really for us, you know, uh, as busy professionals in town. Uh, our bandwidth isn't really large, um, and what Pride does is it brings those people to the forefront, and it's going to help us to grow this organization to uh, to an amazing organization, which I, I really have high hopes for, to see that Collingwood actually becomes a destination for the LGBTQ. And I, I, I think this the kind of community that we have um, and the people that are here, that can be achieved. As a trans woman, I feel like we've been largely erased over the decades from the Pride movement and uh, are very much 15 years at least behind the lesbian, gay, bisexual or the sexual identity movement. And I think that Pride for me now has to be about the same thing that it started to be about. It's advocacy, right? It, for a lot of people, they, th they just see festivals and they see parties and they, th they talk about inclusivity and love who you want to love. But I want to see more of be who you want to be, right? Because for me, it's, it's got very little to do with my sexual orientation or my sexuality, and so much to do with my entire identity as a woman. Um, and I, I feel like that's the, that's the next movement that we need to be focused on. I, I say to, to the generations that, um, the, and the reason why I do the work that I do is for future generations. I, I feel like their, their generation has a lot of privilege, and I, and I say, and I say that uh, with gratitude because it's not my experience of coming out. You know, I came out first when I was 14 years old as a gay man, knowing that that wasn't the right space for me to be in, but safer space for me to be in. And then again, in, um, in, when I was 32, as a trans woman, knowing that I was potentially gonna lose my relationship and my job and all these things, and all those things did happen, right? And I've been the victim of violent crimes. Uh, I became a drug addict. I wanna say, um, have, have gratitude every day for the freedom to choose to be who you are. And it's not a choice, but they get to choose to be who they are every day and live authentically. Have gratitude for that. But also, um, I say to my generation, don't forget to connect with our youth and educate them on our history because history has a way of repeating itself when we don't honor it. You know, there's so much going on in the world right now. We're seeing things about residential schools, um, trans, uh, trans people are still socially acceptable to harm them or d deny them access, even though there's laws that protect us. Uh, and I think our, our, our younger generation has it right. I'm hopeful for our future because they, they exist and they exist unapologetically. I've always known that I was trans, right? The age of four is the first time I told my mom I was a girl, but I didn't really have the words for it. And um, 
until I, I started to learn the words and but see people like me on TV, but most of them were on Jerry Springer. They were pulling out each other's hair and I didn't want to be that kind of woman. So I thought I could choose to be gay, right? And so I kind of went that route. But I remember going to gay bars out as a gay man, hiding myself, being miserable, and hearing other gay men make trans jokes at the bar and knowing that even my own friend group, it would not be safe for me to come out to. You know, and um, there's, there's people that um, show support today, but still people that other me in my own friends groups, right? Um, that they no longer feel connected to me uh, because I'm, I'm not a gay man, right? I think that there's social classes even amongst the queer and trans community. I'd like to erase that completely. Um, I think we need to take a feminist view on everything. Um, and, and I think that's when we're actually gonna see equality and change take place, right? Erase gender lines completely. Uh, allow people just to love who they want to love and be who they want to be. It's a utopia. I don't know how long it's going to, or if it ever could exist, um, but I hope for it and I pray for it. I love the, the changes I've been able to create in the world by being noticed, but I would love to also not need to be noticed anymore. Just to go back to a living life, um, just as human. And uh, it's a, sorry, I got choked when I say that. Um, it's a privilege I haven't had for a very long time. Um, a privilege that most people take for granted, you know? Um, I would love a day where folks like me don't have to look over our shoulder. Um, I feel like a lot of changes happen in a very quick time, but there's so much more work to be done.